here we go again hello guys so let's continue with this series of mini lectures I will say uh, and you're gonna say oh mini lectures 45 minutes each yeah well those are mini lectures because uh, we have to discuss a lot of things uh, and the topic that we're gonna be covering today is how the loads are transferred remember we first talk about the structural design then after that we discuss the type of loads then in the previous one we talk about the philosophies of design and how the loads are combined and now we're gonna talk about how the loads are transferred because this is something that people take for granted and yeah it, it has a lot of common sense here it is a lot of common sense but sadly <laughs> there's a bunch of people that don't have a lot of common sense so let's talk about let's talk about this a little bit okay so the load path this is something that makes sense this is something that is logic for example look at this type of drawing here and this is a simplified drawing of course but if you have a slab that slab is going to be resting on the floor beams could be resting on the floor beams in this case they are resting it is resting in the floor beams and those floor beams are the ones taking the whole load coming from the slab now those floor beams are distributing the load to the sides you see this floor beam here is distributing the load the, the, the load from the slab to this side and to this side to the girders and those girders are receiving the load from the joist which at the same time receive the load from the slabs and the girders are transmitting those to the columns now the columns, what is the function of the columns? The columns support the structure, but at the same time, take all those loads, and those loads are transmitted to the foundations. And these are the foundations of the structure, and the foundations of the structure distribute the load to the floor, to the soil, to the ground. And if you have a second story, a third story, a fourth story, the process is the same one. The only thing is that you have the slab, and the slab will transfer to the joists, which transfer to the girders, which transfer to this column here on top and this then you keep adding the weights until you go to the bottom that's kind of the way it should go if things are straightforward but things are not always straightforward so let's talk about this and let's see a little bit of cases here let's study this situation which is a really really academic situation and a really easy situation to to handle you have this slab and you have these floor beams here or girders so what is happening here if you idealize this and you, you see it from the top the drawing is going to look something like that where you have this one will be this one here made out of wood and then you have the other end will be this one here so if you want to calculate or you need to calculate the load first of all this i'm assuming that it's just supported in both ends so that's why you have these conditions here and i say i'm assuming you don't have to assume in real life you're going to determine that you're going to prescribe that or you're going to know that so now you have this part here now how much load do you think just out of common sense this one is taking well this one first of all is taking less load than this one right and it looks like that so if you want to apply the solomon rule and I don't want to go into the Bible but basically what you have to do is be fair and that's what you're doing every single one of these joists or beams or girders they have to take their fair share now what is their fair share well this load here it will be half of the distance here half of the width is going to be absorbed by this one and this other half will be absorbed by this one that makes sense once again that's what I'm saying that this chapter makes a lot of sense and once you have this load well you can calculate these reactions it's a very easy to calculate the reactions and you know how to do that now let's talk about an interior gear there for example one of these now if you're talking about these this one will be absorbing half and half the load is going to be bigger than this one double actually if the spans are the same length so this one here this type of load will be absorbed by that girder and by the way what we are doing right now is called tributary 
area. Every element, every construction element takes its share of load and that load can be determined or predetermined or pre-estimated by the means of the tributary area method and that's what we are doing. Now, of course, the reactions here are going to be double of the value if the spans are the same and the load keeps constant, but it's going to be bigger anyway. Now, if you talk about that brick wall over there, then what are, we gonna, what are you going to have there? At the end, you're going to have this one. So you're going to have this reaction, which is transmitted from the joist, will be applied to the wall here and also here for this one. And then one, two, three, four, five, the five interior ones will be this type of reactions here. And then you design with these loads, whatever you have to design. Easy peasy. Now, let's check out this case. Let's check out this case. For this case, it's kind of the same thing, right? So this is the distribution, you have the columns, you have the girders, you have the floor beams. Apparently these floor beams are taking the load from the slab and transferring the load to these girders side to side. So if we use tributary area for that, you're gonna have this one and this one with half of the area, half and half, and then these ones, the interior ones, are gonna have bigger uh, reactions. Now, what about with the columns? Well, now it all depends. I don't know what type of uh, connection I have between this girder and this column. Now, assuming that this is just resting on top of that, and it's not a moment transmission connection, if it's not a moment transmission connection, these reactions from this girder are going to be transferred to the columns. And those reactions are going to be transferred at the same time to the foundations. And the foundation is going to distribute that to the ground. That's it. And then you can design the foundations accordingly, of course. Now, but what if this is not just resting? What about you have that bolted in such a way that you ensure or welded in such a way that you uh, have a moment transfer connection there. Well, if you have that, whenever you have the columns and you have the beam on top of that, whenever the beam is deflecting, it's producing these into the columns. So there's a moment that is going to be produced over there in that part. And then you have to transmit that moment also to the column, which is going to be transmitted also to the foundations and you have to design the foundations under the condition not only of vertical load but vertical load plus moment which is going to cause a different effect on the soil also now what about this one this one is almost the same right this one has half oh but now we have values so if we are considering one of the exteriors or in this case i, I started with the interior one okay let's say the interior one if this is 5 and this is 5, so half of the distance is going to be 2.5 to each one. And if this load is 100 pounds per square foot, I multiply that by this 5, and that will be the distributed load per linear foot on this girder, on this joist beam. beam. So 5 times 100, it will give me 500 pounds per foot in this direction. Now the distance, this 10, is the distance from here to here, which is this one. And if I want to calculate the reactions for that interior girder, will be 500 times 10 divided by two. That will be each one of these two reactions. Now, of course, if this is the interior one and the tributary area of this and of that is half of the tributary area for this one, everything is gonna be symmetric. The load is gonna be half and the distances are gonna be half the, the not the distances. Now I'm shrinking the distances. <laughs> the the reactions are going to be half also because the load and the tributary area got reduced in half. And then you will have this type of situation. This load corresponding to this reaction, for example. If you're talking about AE, you're talking about that girder over there. Well, then this load here will correspond to this reaction. And now this load and this load will correspond to this reaction and to this reaction and this end. 
and that will be it. Anything else that you see missing there? Well, I don't know about you, but on top of these tributary loads coming from this area, this joist has also an added weight. I don't know how much is that. It could be 50 pounds per foot, it could be 20 pounds per foot, but there has a weight added to that. So that is missing there. And also here, in this one, in this girder, that girder is supporting these loads, but on top of that also is supporting its own self weight. I just want you to keep that in mind every single time. Okay, now, what if the girders and beams are not perfectly defined? Imagine now that you have a structure, you have a slab, you have girders, and everything is gonna be cast in place with reinforced concrete, for example. And what about you have a, most, a more symmetric square section instead of rectangular section, AKA this one here? Well, the ACI 318 specification tells you what to do. If those two distances are similar, and by similar, I, I, I should say something not similar. I should say, if these two distances are really different, and by really different means one of them is at least two times the other, at least two times the other, then you proceed in the same way that you were doing it before. So if this distance is 10 and this distance is five, I'm just gonna cut this in half and I'm gonna go half and half. That's it. That's what I'm gonna do. But uh, now if both distances are similar, this is what I was telling you, right? Okay. If now you have L2 over L1 is bigger than two. So if this distance is bigger than this one and it's bigger than two, then you just go half and half and you just load it in that way. And this is what we did before. Now, what about if they are similar? In this case, they are the same. So if they are the same, why, who am I to say that I'm gonna divide it and I'm gonna give half to this one or half to this one? If they are the same or they are similar, every one of these beams or girders or whatever you want to call them, lights. Come on, lights. Okay. Every one of these girders, they have to absorb the share of the load. And what the ACI, once again, 318 tells you to do is something like this. You're gonna start from each corner at 45 degrees. And these, 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 and that are gonna be the tributary area that every girder has to absorb. Surprise, surprise, when you were taking a statics, you were always talking about, oh, these triangular loads, I don't see them anywhere. I introduce you to a triangular load. You see, this is another way triangular loads can be from on top of soil distribution or water. There you go, triangular loads. Now, as you can see here, everything is cast in place. Everything is monolithic. So if this is one piece, this is a perfect moment transfer connection and you should assume either that this is a frame or then you can assume that this is fixed fixed uh, connection here. Now the value of the load is also important. Why this is 500 pounds per foot? Because the, this, the load is a five, if I'm not mistaken. Well, it doesn't say it here. But yes, okay, the load is 50 then, uh, 50 pounds, no, 100 pounds per square foot. And then you multiply that by this, ah, yeah, it's here, 100 pounds per square foot. And then you multiply that by this height here, which is five. And then you get the 500 pounds per foot. Now let's look at this example. Okay, in this example, you, it says the flat roof of steel frame building is intended to support a load of two kilonewton per meter square over its surface. Now determine the roof load within the region A, B, C, D, and you have the dimensions over there that is transmitted to the beams B, C, B, C, and D, C, here. Okay, there you go. Let's start. 
first you have to check if this is one way or two way one way meaning if only the two of the girders or the four girders are going to absorb the load or the four of them or three of them i don't know the four of them are going to absorb uh, the load seven divided by four is less than two that means that all of them should get it, its share of loading how you have to come 45 degrees from every side when you do that 45 45 45 from 45 these lines intersect here at the center and this is two two meters here meaning keep that in mind because if this is two meters and the load is four this height is going to be two times two four correct so now determine the roof load within the region a b c d a b c d okay perfect b c and d c so now this is what i have or this is what i have if i want to do this one i'm going to show it here because it's easier i don't have to flip the the image now we say two times two right so this is going to be a triangular load over this portion of this beam or girder or joist or span drill and this is going to be two times two four so basically that will be it if i want to calculate the the reactions and i'm assuming that this is simple supported here and here but just simple this takes half this takes half of that load over there now what about if i'm studying this girder here well same thing if this distance is two like this one two then this height is going to be four and this load now is taking a trapezoidal uh, distributed load like that and if i'm studying this one that one will be taking this plus that or two times this one here and this is the way you proceed with this type of situations now what if you have this <coughs> now look at that I don't have the distances, but it was already determined here the way the, the slabs act. And if this is two way, one way slab, then half of the distance, this area is going to be transmitted to this girder. But at the same time, look what happened. Now, this is two way, so it's going to be 45, 45, 45, 45. So I, I'm going to have from this side, from this end, on top of this girder, I'm going to have a trapezoidal or triangular load. And from this side, I'm going to have a rectangular load loading this girder here. Now, what about this girder, for example? If this is a cantilever, the total area is assumed to be absorbed by that. And also this triangular load coming from this part here. If this is Two way, but this is two way only supported by this and that. Well, then you do the same thing. You come in 45 degrees, and then this is gonna take one part, and this is gonna take the other part. This is gonna be trapezoidal, and this is gonna be triangular in this particular case. This one, 45, 45, 45, 45. Uh, this one is in three ways, meaning triangular triangular I mean 45 45 this is gonna support probably a triangle this is gonna support probably another triangle and this one here is gonna support either a triangular load or a trapezoid coming from this end and this one coming from this other end will be receiving another triangular or trapezoidal load start thinking of this because once you think that you know this now you're gonna find that and you're gonna see oh oh what do i do now then you need to define the beams the girders now you have to start dealing with holes because this is the elevator here elevator here you have ducts and you have to start taking that into account and seeing how you're gonna distribute that area in situations like these or situations like these i would like to do this example with you really quick but uh, i'm gonna complete this example in the next video for tributary area i the only thing that i want right now 
I'm not gonna care about live load reduction and I'm not gonna use any value for any number but I just want you to see what happened for example for these beams one prime uh, which is an auxiliary girder here uh, this beam B prime here and the column A2 how the tributary area will be handled for those over there and I'm gonna do that now I'm gonna switch to to the camera document but uh, the next video don't miss the next video because it's gonna be more tributary area and live load reduction for that so right now let me switch to the dog camera here okay now this is the situation that you have and let's start with whatever the problem is asking the problem is asking let me go back here so I can see what the problem is asking for real the problem is asking the beam one prime which is this beam here this girder here okay let's talk about this one let's focus on this one here if I'm focusing on this one what is happening is this is 16 and this is 48 48 divided by 16 is greater than 2 right then that means that this girder we are absorbing half from this side and half from this side meaning this is 8 this is 8 this is 16 like that and in the load let's say that you calculated the load uh, load uh, divided by this is in feet right let's say that is in pounds pounds per feet square if the load is in pounds per feet square then this beam or this girder one prime will be something like this and you will have the load on top of that this distance is 16 and you can put the axis right so this is the axis A this is the axis B like that um, this is 16 so the load here will be 16 times W and this distance here is uh, 32 plus 1648 that will be that bird, that gear there over there one prime now the second question was the floor beam 2 floor beam 2 this floor beam 2 and then we have also the beam B prime I'm gonna start with this beam B prime because it's gonna be easier for you to follow it now, if I'm using this beam B prime now 16 48 that could be in two directions only so I divide this in two and this is taking that value of load how much is this this is gonna be 8 8 times W rectangular load now look at this other part here 32 48 definitely not two times so what I'm going to do I'm gonna start in 45 degrees and 45 degrees and 45 degrees and 45 degrees like that and then you have this situation and this situation is going to be if this is 32 they're gonna meet here at 16 so this is gonna be a rectangular load a trapezoidal load on top of that and this is gonna be 16 times W because this distance is 16 and if you want to know how much is this well you can know how much is that because this is 48 right and this distance from here to here if this is 45 degree this distance this horizontal distance here is going to be a uh, 16 that's it because it's 45 degree and this is gonna be 16 and this is gonna be 16 also like that so if you're talking about this girder the B prime supported between 2 and 3 P here then you're going to have this rectangular load AW this distance is 48 also 
48 now and you're gonna have these other lobes on top of that like that and this distance or this height is 16 W and that will be this load on top of that load for that girder now what about what about what about the last one well not the last one because now we have to work with the floor beam 2 this floor beam 2 this beam here 2 well if this is a 2 I'm gonna put it here 2 then you're gonna have the first axis here is A and then you have something here called B prime B prime and then you have B over here the distance from here to here is 16 and from here to here is 32 that's what you have I'm just drawing this from here to here now look what happened to this part this load is absorbed by this one so it's not being transmitted at all to this part this load will be transmitted to that one so it's still the, the beam 2 is not absorbing anything now this triangular load yes between B prime and B you're gonna have a triangular load like that and this triangular load uh, is uh, 16 W for that one now but let's, let's keep watching what happens here now this is in this side now this girder or this beam here which is B prime which is the one that we have here right B prime B prime is taking some reactions and you're gonna have a reaction here and a reaction here now look at this reaction in particular I'm gonna call this R2 this reaction coming from this girder it's being transmitted also at that point you see that so this reaction will be transmitted at that point I'm going to have that value here R2 R2D2 R2 right there and you might think that we are completed that we are done but we are not done yet why because if you look at let me use this color now if you look at the girder now from this other side this is 16 this is 48 so you have half of the load coming here and the value for that load will be 8 times W so I should have put it but it's good that I did this I need some space so you're gonna have a rectangular load here and this is gonna be 8 times W that part supported here and supported here that's kind of the way you work with that the last question that was asked here was a uh, column A2 well if you're gonna look for the column A2 remember the the structural planning like that the, the elements are are called based on the axis so when you say A2 that's the column that we are being referred to so if you have that column A2 then how do you do with the column A2? The column A2 you just have to go and check whatever whatever distance is a uh, is here. That column should be absorbing. If you just want to do tributary area, a general tributary area, that column should be absorbing half and half. So basically, what you do for the column is that you go halfway and halfway there are several ways of doing this okay but I'm just using the simplest way halfway halfway and halfway and that will be the tributary area for that H column over there that one over there how much is this distance well that distance should be half in this way which is 24 and half in this other way which is also 24 like that because this is 48 right 
So 24 and 24. And what else, what else, what else? Um, in this direction, this is 48 also. Half the distance, so this is going to be also 24. So that column will be absorbing 48 by 24, that part. If you're working with this column, this one here, the column B3, bingo, the column B3, and if this instance is 48, then it will be, the column will be here, and then you're going to have all this tributary area, this is going to be 24, and this is going to be 24 also, half of the distance from here to here will be absorbed by that, 24, and the tributary area acting on that column will be this one for that column, and so on. I mean, we're going to do another example of this, complete with values and library reduction in the next part of this uh, video. So guys, uh, thank you for watching this one. Um, and we're going to be working right away with live load reduction and tributary area. Keep watching. See you later.